uses a particular tool in, in the way that he tries to teach using Jesus' words. There's, there, there are several different characters built into this story. And some people think that all of the different characters should have a different color from their voice. There are red letter Bibles and, and so if you're reading a red letter Bible and the letters are red, then that's Jesus. Well, uh, God talks in this text. Maybe, maybe when God talks, the text should be green. Maybe when the narrator talks, the text should be black. Maybe when somebody else talks, the text should be a different color. Maybe that would help us pick out and see who's saying what. The, the tool that the author of Mark uses pretty consistently is that he portrays the disciples as being um, stupid, not very bright, uh, less than less than intelligent. He, he portrays them as being out of touch. With, with what's going on in the text. In, in this text, for instance, Peter is portrayed as someone who, who's witnessing this event of a lifetime. You're not going to see this very often. You're, you're not going to be on a mountaintop very often and then uh, encounter Moses and Elijah and Jesus in uh, in clothes that are brighter than snow. Brighter, uh, it's so bright that it's, it's impossible that they were bleached by someone at the laundromat. So something, something else is going on with the clothing that Jesus has on. This text, this one text, is where we get the expression of mountaintop event. And all of us want to have mountaintop events. All of us want to have times in our life that are just so awe-inspiring that they're outside of what we normally think of as, as being normal. And we want to be part of that. We want to be part of those times when the hair on the back of our neck stands up. We want to be part of those times when uh, our tummy kind of uh, doesn't know exactly what it's doing or which way it's going to go. We, we want those experiences. We want to have those times in our life when when we look back, it's easy for us to understand that that was God in our life. That, that was God coming into our life and being with us while we were experiencing whatever it was we were going through. And there are literally thousands of illustrations that, that include what I'm talking about. The Footprints in the sand. Oh, what a beautiful poem. It, uh, it, it's just a wonderful poem. And, you know, I bet that on any given Sunday during the church year, someplace, somebody's preaching using footprints in the sand. And that whole idea that uh, Jesus carries us from time to time. Another one 
is, is the story, do you remember the story about the guy throwing a, a starfish back into the ocean? There, there's a guy walking on a beach and there are hundreds of starfish and he's picking them up off the beach and throwing them back in the water. And somebody, somebody like Peter, not very smart, asked him what he's doing. Well, you ought to be able to tell what he's doing. He's throwing starfish back in the water. And that's what he tells to the guy. He says, well, I'm, I'm throwing these starfish back in the water. And, and the person who asked him about it, Mark guy says, well, you can't possibly believe that that makes a difference. There, there are entirely way more starfish than you have time to throw back into the ocean. So what, what difference does it possibly make Fish back in the ocean, and the guy just picks up another one, threw it in the ocean, and said, It mattered to that one. <laughs> it mattered to that one. Oh my goodness. There, there, there's scenario after scenario after scenario. When I read scripture and I, and I run into one of those phrases at the very beginning of a, of a text, sometimes I wonder what that means. This text starts by saying six days later. What's that mean? Six days later, what? What's that mean? Six days later. Six days later from what? Six days after what? So what six days? Well, if you'll remember with me, it's six days after Peter had announced to the little tribe that Jesus was the Christ. It's six days after Peter, the not-so-smart guy, said, Oh my God, you're God. <laughs> so fast forward six days, and now you've got Peter not really understanding what that means. You've got Peter not understanding what it means that Jesus is God. Because there they are. They're sitting on a mountaintop. They're camping out. Uh, Peter, in, a, in his wisdom, says, Oh, wow, look, God, it's a good thing we're here. We can build three houses. Keep 
isso. Is, is what Jesus says when they're coming back down the mountain. The, the piece I talked about with the kids. It, it, uh, it's kind of abbreviated in a way. They've just witnessed a, a, a revelation, a true revelation of who Jesus is and how Jesus fits in the overall scheme of things. You've got two absolute giants of the faith, Moses and Elijah. But Jesus' clothes are whiter than, are cleaner than, are more shiny than Moses' clothes or Elijah's clothes, either one. That, that probably means something, do you think? That probably has some kind of significance. That probably has meaning that may be hard for us to actually wrap our minds around. But we need to try anyway. What does that mean? That Jesus is higher up the ladder than Moses and Elijah. What does that mean? God throws in another little piece that I think we have to understand while we're trying to figure all this out. God here in Mark gives us a commandment. You know, the Old Testament people had ten commandments. And if they didn't live by those ten commandments, boy, they were in trouble. Jesus is in the commandment business. God is in the commandment business. Uh, you have to have some rules so you can play the game. Jesus doesn't want them to tell other people. 
Jesus doesn't want them to tell other people that he's going to be crucified. He's going to die on a cross. And he's going to raise from the dead. That's what he doesn't want them telling other people. I suppose he probably doesn't want them telling other people that because he knows that people don't have enough information to process that. There's no way for, for us, unless we know the end of the story, there's no way for us to process that information. If, if, if someone we loved came to us and said, look, uh, 10 days from now, I'm going to die, but then I'm going to be resurrected and be raised up to heaven. We, we wouldn't, there's not a way in the world we'd be able to cope with that information. We just couldn't. We don't know what that means. With Jesus, we know what that means because we know what happens later. And so it's okay. So here's what I'm wondering. I'm wondering, is, is, is God reliable? Do you trust God? Has God put events in your life that causes you to trust what God has to say to you today. Isn't it like a like building a house out of bricks? Doesn't God give us bricks to build our house with
she met up with and there's a trowel already there. It's already there. God's already done it. All we have to do is take a very small step that direction. And whatever it is we need, God's already put it there. The only way it can go wrong is for us to not take that little bit of step. Wow. It's already there. Waiting on us. And it's not just waiting. It's waiting on us in at least two ways. It's waiting on us individually. Whatever it is, it's already there for Rick Roach. Whatever it is, it's already there for Frog and Tina Henry. Whatever it is, it's already there for Doris, for Ray, for Rod, for Charlie, for Doris. It's already there. But it's also already there for all those people together. It's already there for Doris and and Ray with no commas. I know that's bad uh, punctuation, but it's already there. So, so I'm wondering, as we're coming down off the mountain, and Jesus has said, don't tell anybody. We know what that means. That means tell everybody. What, what are we going to do? There's a stack of two fours over there. There's a stack of bricks over there. There's a stack of concrete blocks over there. There's, a, there's electric wire. There are switches. What are we going to do? What are we going to do with that stuff that's already there? God has ordained that we pick that stuff up and use it. How are we going to do that? Both personally and corporately. How are we going to do that? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What are you going to do with that pile of Building 